do you want to see how I save five thousand dollars by building my own gantry crane at home keep watching I have a few heavy pieces of equipment that I have to move around the shop every now and then and it really presents a challenge because I don't have a forklift I don't have a tractor and so anything heavy like this becomes a real challenge to move around so I started looking around online and after looking around for a little bit I found that just about everything that could be used uh, was out of my price range and they were all steel gantry frames they were all thousands of dollars I saw some images of some broken gantry cranes which I found to be pretty comical and then of course I started YouTubing and I found some other people who had made gantry cranes uh, out of wood now I'm not a structural engineer I have been in the woodworking business for over half of my life and so I've always been around contractors and understood uh, strength limitations of timber and things like that um, but after looking around I decided I felt pretty comfortable building my own so that's what I went ahead and did and this video is going to show you the process of how I went about from beginning to end of making this crane and then at the end you'll actually get to see it work so one of the first things that I had to do was get some 6 by 6s from the hardware store obviously I own a sawmill and so cutting 6 by 6s on my own wouldn't be a problem but uh, I just wanted to make sure that I had treated timber because this gantry crane is going to be sitting outside most of the time. Then what I had to do was go into my shop because <laughs> I thought, well, I might actually use this inside. So I started measuring the height of the beams to make sure that I would not make it too tall um, so that I would have a usable gantry inside. After that, I had to measure out all of the work on the braces. So I went ahead and started doing that. Um, I'm actually going to have a notch at the top of the post, and that's what I'm measuring out um, that is going to accept the very top of the gantry. So you'll see me doing that, and as always, Winston is learning every step of the way. Dimensional lumber, as you know, doesn't come in perfect, uh, perfectly dimensioned every single time. But as far as the height is concerned, I at least wanted uh, left side to right side to be as equal as possible, and so that's what I'm measuring out right now. I'm going to go inside here in a minute. I'm going to start cutting all the braces and all the legs to length, uh, the base of the gantry. And the best way for me to do that was on this uh, chop saw that I had. Uh, obviously, it's not deep enough to cut both sides all the way through. So I just went ahead and as you'll see here on the miter joint, cut one side and then I would flip it over and then I would cut the other side. And it works surprisingly well uh, because the saw is straight up and down 90 degrees. So you'll see right here. And there we go. One of the hardest things to do when you're working with uh, pre-dimensioned construction type timber is to get everything perfectly square and flat. Um, and so I'm going to show you here as a demonstration exactly how these pieces are lining up. I think that's pretty good. So next you're going to see me cutting this 8 foot beam in half. Um, it's, it was obviously you can't get 6 by 6s at least at the place I was at in 4 foot lengths so I just bought an 8 foot. Then I had to cut this long 8 foot in half for the 4 foot and again that's going to be the legs for the base of the gantry. I guess in one sense you could say that this is sort of my beginning of timber framing experience. Uh, I am planning on building a little timber frame house, uh, wouldn't really call it a shed, <laughs> but a little timber frame house uh, in the future, and that I will be cutting my own timbers for. So I found different methods, different ways of doing things, as would be expected as you go along the, pr the process. And here I'm cutting the top notch out to accept that top post for the crane. It really went pretty smooth, uh, no real problems to speak of, uh, except for that that notch didn't fall right out. A couple taps came right out, no problem. So now you're going to see me start to uh, square up the gantry. You can see this is the beginning of assembling the base. Um, I was just using normal timber screws to assemble this whole thing together, and you'll see at the end of the video what all that looks like. It does have pretty strong strength using those. I've used the timber screws for other projects in the past. Uh, I've been very satisfied with them. And it is at this point that I realized that the timber was not square on the bottom. <laughs> so that it would have been impossible for me to actually get this gantry nice and perfectly square. 
So I had to come up with a solution of that, uh, which meant I had to take the track saw out again and I cut the base perfectly flat with that. I actually found that to be easier for me than bringing it back over to the chop saw and trying to cut it off on that. And there you go. At this point I'm going to start assembling the bottom of the crane and you'll see I'm just using the timber screws. That is not in real time in case you're wondering. I wish I could work that fast. Just imagine what I could get done in a day. Um, I'm measuring the brace right here. It's just going to be a 45 degree angle brace. Same process that I used before cutting the 45 angles. And you're seeing me um, you cut a whole bunch of different angles for that to do that. And again, it's important to get these as 45 as possible so that you don't have any open gaps that would cause any uh, tension problems once you put weight on the crane. It's important to always check. You see I got my square there and I'm checking constantly to make sure that everything is as square as I can possibly get it. Alright, I have something resembling an actual base of a gantry crane here. This is the fun part, getting it lifted up, making sure that all of my Measurements were correct on the height, and that is looking pretty good. The next thing I have to figure out is I have four pieces of 2x8, and I want to dimension all of those down so that they are 5.5 inches thick. And this is pretty self-explanatory. I'm just going to run them through the planer until I get them the proper thickness. And then I'm going to do a huge glue up uh, to make sure that everything stays together using screws to do that. I'm going to quit talking for a minute and just let you watch that process. This right here is one of the funner parts of the project for me, and that's doing the glue up for the top beam that's going to hold all of the weight for the gantry. Now, I am not a structural engineer. I will repeat that one more time. I am not a structural engineer. This is more based on experience and hearsay from other people in the construction industry that have assured me that if I were to do this, it would hold the weight that I am seeking to lift with it. So, before you make a comment, hopefully you've watched this portion of the video, and that will satisfy you. Well, this uh, looks a lot easier than it was. At this point, it's getting pretty heavy, and so I called my lovely wife outside to come and help me assemble uh, the crane. <clears throat> Again, I'm just using timber screws in the top for now. In the future, I'm probably going to reinforce the corners a bit more than what you'll see in this video, uh, but for what I'm doing here, it does the trick. I had a couple options as far as what I was going to do for the lift on this gantry. And the very first thing that came to my mind was a chain hoist. Um, they're relatively cheap. You can get them in one ton up to almost as high as you want to go. Um, and so I originally bought a chain hoist. <clears throat> and as most people would do, I went around, watched YouTube, and tried to find some people that had made similar things. And overwhelmingly, everybody used the chain hoists. Um, now, I did get a chain hoist, but I'm not going to use it right off the bat because I had a little different idea. I want to maximize the height of my gantry, and so, um, and I would just want to make it easy to operate. <laughs> Who doesn't want something easier to use? So I decided that I was going to use an ATV winch. This is rated for 2,500 pounds, and it will lift more than anything that I will ever have to lift with the gantry. And I don't, I'm not exactly sure how strong the beam strength is on top of that beam anyhow, um, but I have a feeling that I'm somewhere near my maximum uh, at 2,500 pounds anyhow on it. Could be wrong, I'm no structural engineer. Um, but what I'm going to do is mount this winch on top of that beam, and then I'll be able to lift uh, with that, which is a 12 volt battery. And it has the control on it and everything of course. So I'm going to mount this on there first and see if this works. If it does, then great. 
Um, if it doesn't, then I'm going to go to the chain hoist. But at least with a winch like this, you know, it's, it's out of the way. And uh, I won't be constantly hitting my head or running through it or any other number of things that can happen out in the country when animals are running around. <laughs> Who knows? Um, but we're going to try this first, see if this works. Uh, the only adaptation that I'm going to have to make is that it just came with these short little bolts on it. And obviously those are not going to go through the five and a half inch posts that I have on top. So I'm going to have to go to the hardware store, get some longer bolts and do some modifications to make that work. And if there's any real kink in the armor as far as this whole operation goes, it may be the fact that these bolts will be relatively thin and they'll be going through a relatively long beam. But um, I'm thinking it will hold at least for the weight that I have. So uh, let's go on to the next step. Okay, I am back from the hardware store. And while I was there, I found that the size, first of all, it was a metric size of bolt that they had. It was an 8 millimeter, and the longest 8 millimeter they had there was about 4 inches, so um, I couldn't use that. <clears throat> so that's comparable to about a 5 16 in standard, and that went up to 6 inches, and I thought that that would be a good idea to go with that. Um, but with the metal plates on the back and the washers, uh, by the time I got a six inch bolt in there, I would have no thread left on the end. So what I did instead, um, I upgraded. I went to a three eighths long bolt that I could get in seven inches, which would give me more than enough room to get through, um, which the only problem then I, that I had was the holes in the bottom uh, were slightly too small. So I took my three eighths metal bit and very carefully drilled a hole through here, uh, being very careful not to hit the metal cable on there. And now I should be in business. So let's go install this thing and see how it looks. Okay, I apologize for filming directly into the sun. Um, the camera should be adjusting here in a second and you should somewhat be able to see what I'm doing. <clears throat> Thankfully, <clears throat> I'm sorry, the allergies have just been kicking my rear end this last week and I'm still trying to get over them. So I apologize for all the grunting and throat clearing. I did just happen to have this extremely long 3 8 bit in the shop, so no need to buy one of those. I've marked out the two holes where I got a drill. Hopefully I can get them somewhat close. And we want to drill them somewhat straight, so I have sort of a little tip for that if you're into the tip thing. I got my square here. You set that up and that gives you somewhat of a straight guide that you can at least drill it straight hopefully um, left to right and top to bottom I'm just gonna have to kind of eyeball I'm through there all right <clears throat> let's see how that looks By golly, that looks almost perfect. Let's get some bolts in there and see uh, see how this goes together. I realized after I tried installing this winch that I forgot to put uh, the guide hook system in the front of it. So I basically reinstalled the entire thing. So there you can see it up there. And I have the battery just mounted up on top. I don't see it falling on my head anytime soon. Then I have the control right here. On the back I decided just to mount two through bolts on there and that works out pretty well. Okay, this is the subject in question. We're going to see how this gantry crane with this electric chain hoist is going to move this beast off of the trailer. As you can see I already have it off the trailer. So it was a successful move, but now I'm going to show you how I did that. This probably weighs somewhere in the vicinity of over a thousand pounds. I really don't know. Um, but it's definitely more than 500 and less than 1500. So let's get to it.
job, Diddy. Well, as you can see, the gantry crane worked pretty well, I thought. There's a couple of alterations I'll probably make in the future. Um, I'll probably eventually end up going up to just the normal two-ton chain hoist. Uh, but again, the reason that I use this is because I can get my maximum height out of the gantry. Held the weight no problem. Um, the hardest part was actually getting the trailer in between here because uh, with the beam that I used, it's only exactly as wide as my trailer. So if I don't per uh, back up perfectly, I end up having all kinds of problems doing that. So, I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Saved myself a bunch of money by not buying a big steel frame crane. By the way, uh, this is going to end up being a really nice coffee table, a centerpiece for a home. Um, and I'm basically going to chop it down here, level off the roots on the front, it'll get turned upside down, and there's going to be a round sheet of glass that's going to go on top of it to cap it all off. It's going to be a beautiful project. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy the videos, please go ahead and subscribe. <laughs> what are you doing, you silly face? Uh, I have videos every now and then. Uh, everything from my sawmilling videos, which you may have seen, all the way up to my woodworking videos where I build high quality furniture for customers from the logs that I saw for them. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. In my did. He's a great builder. Thank you. Thank you for watching. And don't say camera for the third time.